it's good to be back again. Uh, so today the topic is uh, psychological aspects of aging. Okay, and uh, generally what happens is, you know, we know about the physical changes which take place in aging. Okay, so we know that, you know, maybe arteries stiffen, we know that, uh, you know, there are wrinkles, we know about diseases. So we know about all these things, but in terms of, you know, what kind of psychological, what kind of mental changes take place in aging. So uh, generally, we don't know what it is, what are the normal changes which take place, what are the abnormal change which, uh, changes which take place. And that is something uh, that, you know, we need to focus on. And if we know about it, then we can be better prepared. Okay. And then we also won't have fear about a lot of things. Okay. So we are going to cover, uh, you know, the following aspects. It can be seen, no? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we'll delve into these uh, specific aspects, you know, which are related to, uh, you know, psychology and, uh, you know, the psychological changes which take place in aging. So the first one is cognition. The second one is memory. What kind of changes take place with regard to memory? The third one is attention. Okay, so generally there is a notion that, you know, we can't uh, basically, uh, you know, pay attention or we can't pay attention for a longer period of time. So, you know, so what, 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 what do psychologists say? What do geropsychologists say? And as you might be knowing that geropsychology is a branch within uh, gerontology, which looks, looks into what kind of psychological problems uh, older adults have and the solutions for it and the treatment that is available for it. So geropsychology is a subject in itself. Okay, so uh, I have tried to, you know, kind of... Uh, kind of get, uh, you know, findings from, uh, you know, different psychologists and, you know, and what they have said about different aspects. So the third thing is attention. The fourth is intelligence. Okay. So there is also the belief that, you know, intelligence reduces. We are not able to understand things. We are not able to grasp things. So what happens? Uh, the next one is language skills. Okay. So, uh, you know, do they decline? So are we able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, grasp new words and what happens to language? And the last one is emotional regulation. Okay, so, you know, uh, you know, mean whether emotions, basically, we are able to control them or uh, basically they, they go haywire. So that is something that, that we will uh, look at. Okay, so the first, this is cognitive aging. Okay, so cognitive aging is basically how people perceive, learn, remember and think about information, how we reason, okay, how we mentally perform a task, okay, how do we mentally think about things, how do we mentally learn things, okay, so this, this, you know, and what happens, and I'm also going to talk about the practical implications, what happens in aging and what is normal and what is not normal. The second, this is, you know, there are individual differences in cognitive function. So, you know, with, with two people, uh, you know, there are going to be, I mean, different uh, things, you know, which will happen. That with some people, there'll be cognitive decline. With some people, there might not be cognitive decline. With some people, there might be a lot of changes in language. They are not able to kind of, uh, uh, you know, remember a lot of words. So there are a lot of individual differences in cognitive uh, uh, in function, in cognitive function, and that differs from person to person. Okay, but the main thing which we need to remember is that normal age-related cognitive decline it does not impair a person's ability to perform daily activities. Okay, so not remembering certain words, not being able to, you know, remember your doctor's appointments, that is not, that does not have a major impact on your day-to-day uh, -day activities. If, uh, you know, you make use of certain strategies to remember things in a better way. Okay, so this is regarding cognitive aging. Okay, so what is cognitive aging? And uh, I will now go to the practical implications. What happens? 
Okay, so research basically says that processing speed decreases with age. Okay, so processing speed in the sense that the way I grasp information that could decrease with age, not necessarily it will decrease with each and every person, but processing speed, the speed with which the pace at which we grasp information could decline, okay, could decrease with age. Okay, so a person may struggle with complex tasks which require a lot of information processing. Okay, so reasoning with familiar material is stable, but with unfamiliar material that declines with age. Okay, so if you are familiar with a particular thing, then maybe you will be able to uh, master it, you will be able to excel and there will be no problems with grasping that particular knowledge or, you know, grasping that particular information. I'll give you an example. So I used to work in this, uh, you know, CA firm and uh, he, this, this, it was a small CA firm and there were around nine people. And out of that nine people, this employer had around seven seniors. So was sad seniors, jo the, so I was a bit surprised. And, you know, I was, I was curious that, you know, he had people above the age of 65 and he had employed all of them. So I went and asked him, I said, sir, uh, uh, you know, you have uh, around, you know, seven people who are seniors above the age of 65, which is not commonly seen. And why are you doing that? So he said, he told me three things. He said that the very first thing is that whatever uh, work needs to be done, the information uh, or, you know, the accounts which need to be done. So that is accurate when it comes to seniors. I don't have to look into it again and again. When I had employed young people, I had to go through it, you know, uh, time and again. And that was a problem for me. So this means familiar material jo hai, generally seniors will excel in that you know provided they kind of try and find work which is related to what they already know okay the second uh, reason which he told me was that you know these seniors come out of interest and they take less holidays okay so uh, you know i don't have to coax them into doing certain things and you know they don't take holidays which is which is beneficial for me, Ye ho gaya, wo ho gaya, this festival, that festival. So they come out of genuine interest. That was the second thing which he said. And the third thing which he told me was that they keep the atmosphere of the office very light. Okay, so reasoning or performing, uh, you know, with familiar material that is stable or a person can gain mastery in it, but with unfamiliar material that declines with age. And I'm sure you might be able to relate that with your own experience as well. With new information, there is a problem uh, acquiring it. There is a problem processing it. There is, a pro pro there is a problem understanding it to some extent. But with familiar information, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. Okay, so should we... So in terms of memory, uh, there are different kinds of memory, okay, and what happens in old age, okay, so that is something that we need to understand, and according to psychologists, there are six different kinds of memory, okay, so the very first one is working memory, okay, so working memory is basically the ability to temporarily hold information. Okay, so if I get a particular number and then, you know, I have to save it or if I have to dial that number, then I need to memorize that particular those digits and dial that number. Okay, so that is working memory. Okay, so I'm working with whatever information uh, which I have temporarily. So that is uh, not long term, but, you know, whatever information that is there in front of me. Okay, so that is working memory. The second one is semantic long-term memory. Okay, so semantic long-term memory is basically facts, okay, which we have accumulated or which we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, gained over a period of time. So what is the capital of, uh, the, you know, India? So New Delhi, what is the capital of US? So, you know, all these things we have, these are, this is factual information. Okay, so whatever we have gained over a period of time, so these are basically facts. Okay, so that comes under 
uh, that comes under semantic long term memory and this is something that that has happened over a long period of time that's why it's called semantic long term memory okay so information words which we have accumulated gathered over the years tisra jo hai that is called the episodic memory okay so that is in relation to certain uh you know events which take place episodes important episodes which take place and whether we are able to remember the details regarding that particular episode so because it is related to episode it is episodic memory so that is episodic memory the third one the fourth one is prospective memory okay so what am i going to do in the future am i able to remember that i have to go to the bank next week i have to do this i have to go to this organization i have to attend this tare social meeting okay so prospective memory what am i going to do in the future prospective as we know in the future the fifth one is procedural memory okay so procedural memory as in where there is a procedure which is involved okay so if i have to make tea there is a procedure which is involved if i have to learn how to ride a bike there is a procedure which is involved okay so what happens in old age what generally happens so the practical implications are in old age are that working memory episodic memory related to episodes the ability to temporarily hold information and prospective memory which is what i am going to do in the future may decline okay so semantic memory something which is related to facts may improve or remain stable why because we have accumulated it over a period of time and because we have gone through it again and again there is a lot of repetition which is involved and that is why it can improve or it can remain stable the 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 important thing is that this procedural memory which is there that remains strong okay ability to perform well learned procedures that remain stable so very with with great difficulty you will forget maybe if you have been cooking for a long period of time with great difficulty it will be the uh, possible for you to forget that why because you have done it thousands of times okay so this procedural memory where there is a particular procedure which is involved if i uh, you know maybe with accounts if i have there is a procedure which is there in in a uh, procedure with regard to studying that particular thing then that uh, procedure is something that i will not forget some things you know like maybe riding a bike or maybe uh you know how do you use uh, maybe if if one procedural memory procedural memory remains strong the ability to perform well learned procedures that remain stable okay so you will not forget something that you have done lots of times okay where there is a particular procedure which you which is involved and which you have practiced okay so that is something that we need to keep in mind okay now what are the practical implications following types of memory loss are normal among older adults okay so occasionally forgetting where you left things such as glasses or keys okay so that is completely normal forgetting names of acquaintances we are not able to remember or put uh a name to the face that is completely normal okay sometimes people confuse grandson's name with the son's name so even that is quite normal forgetting appointments walking into a room why you have opened the fridge why you have gone into a particular room even that is quite normal okay becoming distracted if there is a lot of noise if there is a lot of clutter in front of you even that is quite normal okay but uh you know when it comes to alzheimers a lot of people get scared you know i mean am i getting alzheimers and generally what we have seen is that with people with alzheimers um as 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 you know as is also mentioned on the slide that you know forgetting keys is quite normal occasionally 
but with people with alzheimers the problem is once they get the keys they will not know what to do with it so we've seen people you know who get the keys and then they either keep it in the freezer or they keep it on the gas because they don't know what to do with it okay so basically what we are saying that if your memory is failing you in some way so make use of certain strategies make use of certain memory aids make use make use of mnemonics write down things okay if certain things you are not able to remember don't just keep on you know saying to yourself that you know i'm not able to remember i'm not able to do this and i'm not able to do that constantly we have been saying and you know in my earlier sessions also i've said in old age the problem is we generally focus on what i cannot do what i need to focus on is what i can do and that is what does not happen in old age okay so attention okay what happens to attention ability to concentrate on something okay so there are three kinds of attention in psychology selective attention divided attention and sustained attention okay so selective attention okay so selective attention as in you know the ability to the ability to kind of find something maybe amongst uh, a lot of things which are there say suppose you take a website and suppose you want to uh, find out you know flights going to delhi so within that website you want to get that particular information when there is a lot of other distracting stimuli which is there okay so that is selective you want selective information okay so that is that is that is with regard to selective information what it is the second is divided attention the ability to concentrate or give attention to multiple things at the same time that is what is called divided attention and the third the third type of attention is sustained attention the ability to maintain your attention for a long period of time okay and what happens what are the practical implications okay so we are easily distracted by noise so if the tv is going on in the background that is definitely a distraction there's a lot of visual clutter that definitely is a problem so remove all that generally it is seen that older adults are not very good at multitasking okay so it is necessary and generally it is generally it is said that even not just older adults but people should be doing one thing at a time but generally in old age uh, specifically uh, many things should not be done at the same time because they are not so good at multitasking okay but this but the ability to sustain your attention does not decline with aging so if you want to gain or if you want to learn a particular skill if you want to you know gather information about a particular aspect which you are interested in you can go all out and you know try and do it and kind of uh, uh, you know try and maybe master a skill if you want because that sustained attention is there it does not get lost or it does not decline i'll give you another example uh, i was working with a uh, with a uh, you know with a hr unit where we had started you know uh, special computer classes for seniors and there we saw that uh, you know with seniors first of all there was a lot of reluctance joining that class and then they said you know we won't be able to learn you know uh, what if we have to uh, what if we have to you know leave the class uh, halfway uh what if you are not able to grasp so there were a lot of doubts which were there and at the end once all the topics were taught like you know word and microsoft excel and um, so then you know powerpoint was also taught okay and they were very interested in powerpoint you know most of the batches that we've seen uh, in the computer class they were interested in powerpoint with slides you know features and whatever so at the end the teacher had given them a uh, she had given them uh, an assignment where they had to present something on powerpoint okay and it was seen that they kind of you know learned it so well they learned powerpoint so well also because they were interested that 
you know the the features that they were able to bring into that presentation is something you know that the teacher also did not know so some of the new features they found out on powerpoint okay so uh, they learned it so well okay and they were able to sit on the computer pay attention to what is going on understand it grasp it they were also able to give a small exam and they were also able to do uh, an assignment okay so sustained attention provided you have interest and provided you are willing to uh, uh, you know give that particular invest that particular time okay that is what is most important okay so language skills okay cover a variety of abilities understanding and producing both verbal and written language okay so what happens with language skills vocabulary can remain stable and improve with age okay so the more you read uh, your vocabulary will definitely improve and it remains stable and it can also improve with age but more time may be needed not necessarily uh, this will happen but it may be needed to find a specific word okay and that is what is called that is sometimes called as senior movements okay you might forget you might forget a particular detail you might not remember a particular word so that is quite normal that is quite common okay they may struggle with fast speech someone speaking very very fast that will be a problem okay so not be not being able to find a particular word not being able to remember a specific detail do not harp on those things that nahi aata hai i am not able to remember this thing i am not able to remember that thing repeat write down so that you are able to register properly what you want to remember okay and i think i might have done these brain gym exercises which are also very helpful when you want to remember certain things okay so emotional regulation okay so this refers to the way one processes and regulates emotions especially negative ones so they are less likely to be depressed why because generally it is seen that older adults focus on the positive what is important for me okay so they are less likely to be depressed but at the same time they take time to move out of a negative state so if maybe i'm thinking of a negative memory i will take time to get out of it and it is possible that i can keep on thinking about it so that is possible and that is also because maybe i don't have any activity i'm not doing anything much i have a lot of time on hand and that is also one of the reasons why people may take time to move out of a negative state but they could remember they 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 can be much more positive okay and this is something which is very interesting and i'll come to happiness u curve there's a lot of research which has been done which says that life satisfaction drops during midlife and it begins its recovery around the age of 50 so between 40 and 50 the life satisfaction drops because there are a lot of responsibilities and they are also called the between 40 and 50 is also called the uh, sandwich generation why because they have to look after the parents they have to look after the children okay so life satisfaction basically drops between 40 and 50 and this is what what newer and newer res research is telling us and after 50 they are saying that life satisfaction generally improves why because the focus turns away from social competition and towards more and more social connection okay so the ability the older adults will have fewer social connections they might have fewer social connections but they will be quality social connections they are more satisfying social contacts and that is why uh, life satisfaction improves okay so as the end of life nears priorities shift towards savoring life 
I am better able to know what I am good at. I am better able to understand myself. There is more self-awareness. Okay. And there is also awareness that this present movement counts. So I must try and do whatever is possible in this present movement. Okay. So now the newer research is saying that this life satisfaction is the lowest between 40 and 50 and not in old age. And here we see that old age has been associated with depression. Old age has been associated with deterioration, with death and all negative things. And that is why we see that a lot of, uh, there are a lot of negative beliefs around old age. And the veneration of youth as the happiest time of our lives that is being, that is overblown. And that is being challenged now because they are saying that youth is not the happiest time in our lives. Okay, I mean, we, we do an elder companionship course with, a, with some college students. So this is a college called MMP Shah at Matunga. And uh, around 50 students are there in that class. And, you know, just out of curiosity, I asked them, I said, do you think as youth, do you think that youth is the happiest time? And not even one person said yes. Okay, so there is this, you know, uh, uh, this, you know, this notion that, you know, youth is the happiest time. Everyone wants to be young. But what is research saying that because old age, in old age, you can have more satisfying social connections in old age. Uh, you know, if you, you, you can learn uh, new things, uh, you can do a lot of things maybe which you have not done before, but provided you actually plan your old age uh, in your middle age. Okay. And also when I am basically working on what kind of options which are there and basically trying to do different things in old age. Okay. So research is saying that youth is not the happiest time of our lives. Okay, so intelligence. Okay, so intelligence, how is it defined? Mental alertness, the ability to learn new material, make wise decisions and deal with stressful situations. So most of the things have been covered in this definition. Okay, so what is crystallized intelligence? Two kinds of intelligence, according to psychologists. Crystallized intelligence, which is knowledge, skills and abilities which have been gained over a period of time. Okay, so these have been stored over a period of time. The second one is fluid intelligence, which refers to abilities related to processing or taking in new information, new information, which is maybe based on logic and reasoning, which I have, which I have not known before. Okay, so problems maybe which, which I have to, you know, maybe learning the computer is something that, that may be new and that that might that might come under fluid intelligence okay so but we see that because if you are interested and because sustained attention does not decline even you could master uh, something that you have also acquired newly or information that you have acquired newly okay so intelligence does not become less with age Okay, on the contrary, it improves with age and decision making skills also improves with age. To also give you another example, we see that um, somewhere I had read that, you know, in the US, air traffic controllers, okay, generally the criteria, the age criteria for hiring these air traffic controllers who have to be on the uh, uh, you know, who have to kind of see, you know, which flights land and which flights take off. So, you know, generally people above the age of 60 are preferred. Why? Because they have to make quick decisions. Okay. So decision making skills also improve with age. So the point is there are certain advantages also to old age, which is something that we do not take into account, which we do not focus on at all and the more we study old age the more we study gerontology we will be able to see these things which will also help us in 
uh, uh, you know, in having a meaningful and a positive old age. And that is why we need to know these things. Okay, so activities which are associated with high cognitive function. Okay, so intellectually engaging activities, puzzles, discussion groups, what you have with Tare Social. Okay, so careers that involve high complexity, all this will help you to build your cognitive function. Okay, physical activities, even physical activities contribute towards cognitive function, exercise, gardening, dancing, social engagement, reading new things, talking to people, travel, cultural events, all these are associated with high cognitive function. Okay, this will help in, uh, you know, keeping your mind stimulated. Okay, and that is also very, very as important as keeping your, uh, uh, you know, body also physically active. So along with physical activity, mental activity is also very, very important. So quickly, I'll just tell you that cognitive reserve. Okay, so cognitive reserve is basically... As I've said out here, some people develop better resilience to the effects of aging as they have developed a better capacity because they have done activities which are associated with high cognitive function. They will be able to build this reserve. Okay. And suppose there is maybe a brain injury. Okay. So this cognitive function can help us to deal with uh, or you know to see that you know cognitive decline does not take place okay so higher levels of education engaging occupation participating in stimulating activities learning social interactions contributes to this reserve okay so the more physical activity we do that will definitely contribute to our physical health so in a similar way, if you indulge in cognitive stimulating activities, it will also contribute to the mental or the cognitive reserve in your brain. Okay, and what will it do? If there is, if there is a brain injury, it will help at that time. And secondly, if, there, if cognitive decline takes place, it will help in postponing that cognitive decline. Okay, so cognitive reserve is something also very, very important. And this is a subject in itself, but I just thought that I will introduce this. Okay, so just quickly, ability to learn, that is what is called neuroplasticity. Okay, neuroplasticity means now research is saying that new neurons, you, you are able to build new neurons. New neurons can be created in your brain, which was not the case earlier. Research there was no research around this topic. So if you indulge in cognitive stimulation, uh, cognitive stimulating activities, and if you try and learn something new, then new neurons can be created in your brain. And that will help you to be more mentally active. Second is ability to adapt. Definitely seniors are, ability to, uh, uh, are able to adapt, provided there is that willingness to do it. The third is self-fulfilling prophecy. If I constantly keep on saying that I forget, I forget, I forget, and I'm losing my memory, then this, this prophecy takes place. As in, if I say, if I keep on telling myself that I keep forgetting, then I am also taking myself in that direction. It will happen. If I constantly say that I'm losing my memory, it will happen. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick example. Sally, do we have uh, uh, two, three minutes? You do. Okay, so can I just go on for five minutes? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, so there is a self-fulfilling prophecy which says, you know, there was an experiment which took place where there was a, you know, young people were given some mathematical calculations and older adults were given some mathematical calculations. Okay, so... They were given it on a particular day and after two days, they were asked to do those same mathematical calculations. And what happened was with young people, because they remembered those answers, they quickly finished that task 
within no time. They remembered the answers because it was just done two days prior. But with old, with older adults, what happened was that they kept on, that they again did those mathematical calculations all over again. Why? Because I have this notion, I have this belief that I am forgetting. I am forgetting. What if I'm not correct? What if I don't remember? So they did those calculations again, all over again. Okay, so if I believe that I will not be able to remember, I will not be able to remember. And also, I think, you know, culturally also, we are told that, you know, in old age, you will not remember. So we also internalize these beliefs. And then we don't, and this is what is this, this is what takes place. Memory avoidance. Because I'm not able to remember, because I think I won't be able to remember, I don't try and exercise my memory also. I don't try and remember things. I don't try and make efforts to remember things. And then I just avoid. I'm not able to remember. So why should I put in any effort? Okay, so this ability to learn is there in old age. This capacity to sustain your attention, this capacity to learn, this capacity to gain new information is there in old age. But we do not, we do not try out those things. Why? Because we feel we will not be able to do it. Okay, so it is not how old you are, but how you are old. Okay, and that is what is the most important thing. Okay, so efforts are required, okay, to remember uh, certain things. And as you will also, uh, also, I mean, uh, you, I mean, all of us know that, you know, there is so much of information overload that even the younger generation has problems remembering so many things. Okay, so even they have to have certain strategies, even they have to write down things, even they have to make lists. Okay, so certain efforts also have to be take, taken in old age. And secondly, repetition is what is important. And paying attention, that is also what happens. You know, if we feel that we will not be able to understand, we will not be able to remember, then I will not pay attention to that particular thing. Okay, so with these words, I... Um, I end my session out here. So in case you have any uh, uh, this, you know, questions or maybe if you have anything to share, please, please go ahead. <laughs>